we're joined by the Conservative MP, Virginia Crosby, who has started wearing a stab-proof vest when she holds constituency surgeries. This is a decision which was sparked by the violent and tragic deaths of her colleagues, Sir David Amos, back in 2021, and previously the Labour MP, Joe Cox, back in 2016. I mean, what, a, what an awful decision to have to make. Let's just... I, I can pick up here the A stab vest, which you were wearing just when we introduced you. Um, it's not light, obviously. It's, it's a heavy it's piece of heavy. equipment. <clears throat> yeah. But more importantly, this suggests that you're actually you know, at risk of something which we know has come to pass with two of your colleagues. Just describe to us that risk and what you feel when you're in that position that means that you feel vulnerable. Well, the reality is that uh, I and many other M MPs, we have concerns for our safety. And I won't let those concerns for my safety uh, get in the way of me meeting my constituents. I have a reputation for working very hard and being very approachable, and I would agree with that. And part of my job as, a, as an MP is meeting with my constituents in surgeries, face-to-face -face mm. surgeries, and helping them with their problems and their concerns. And I, I, I'm not a victim. Mm. I, I want to make sure I can do my job, and I won't be cowed by, by the mm. tiny minority of people that, that, uh, that threaten mm. us. Of course, we should, I mean, make it clear that the vast majority of MPs don't wear stab vests. So this is quite an unusual decision mm. that you've made. And, you know, it may be there's particular reasons why you were advised um, to, to do this. But um, is it something that you thought hard about? Is it something that you've seen other colleagues doing as well? There are actually other MPs that do wear um, stab, jet, uh, stab vests, um, Mike Freer, uh, for example. And really, uh, what happens is after the, the, the terrible, terrible murder of Sir David Amos, mm -hmm. I sat down with my team and said, how can we make sure that I and they are safe, that I can actually do my job, that I can do the job that I was democratically elected to do? I didn't just turn up on Arnis Morn uh, and become their MP. The island elected me, and this is a key part of my job. So we sat down, um, I ordered a, a, a stab jacket, I have police protection, um, my local police are absolutely fantastic. They're very, very supportive and they are very, very involved. But this is uh, my safety and the safety of my team is something that I take very, very seriously. Was it... Um, obviously, what happened to David Amos and Joe Cox, horrific, appalling and, I'm sure, very concerning, frightening for, for all MPs. But was it something specific that was happening to you that made you choose to wear this stab vest? Did you, were you receiving threats personally or was this a sort of general concern that people might target MPs? The, the reality is, uh, before I was a Member of Parliament, I was, I was a maths teacher um, and I also worked in, worked in the city. Um, this is... Uh, I was just looking at the numbers. The facts are that two MPs have been murdered mm. in the last seven years. There are only 650 of us. Mm. Um, so I'm doing everything that I can to do my job in a safe and responsible mm. manner. And I, I don't want to have to wear a stab jacket. I don't want to have to take all these mm. measures. But the reality is those are the measures that I need to take to do my job. And it's, and it's, and, uh, it's particularly when you're in a face-to-face -face meeting with a constituent, you wouldn't wear it in the street or visiting a, a local school or hospital or factory? I think the... I mean, I've taken advice, obviously, from my security team and the team, the team on the ground and the team in Westminster. And I think that uh, when I do a face-to-face -face constituency, many, many people know where I am, whereas... Uh, the, uh, Anglesey is a fantastic place. Anyone that's visited will know it's a great place to live, to live and work. And this is a minority of people. Mm -hmm. And even those that... Uh, they might not agree with my, my politics, um, but they are very polite, they're very respectful, and I get an awful lot of support on the island. It is just a minority. What do you think is going on, because the two tragic murders in the last few years, go back 10, 20 years ago, nobody would have thought of MPs being at risk in this way. When you were a maths teacher, you were working in the city, you didn't have to face those kind of risks in your job then. So how does it feel to come into politics and find you needing to decide to do that? And why? What's changed in our mm. society which means that today, compared to the past... You feel that, that, that risk and that fear? Is it social media? Is it alienation? Is it about the decisions we're making? What, what's happening? It really is social media and the fact that um, 
I believe as politicians, um, people are seeking to dehumanise us. I have this um, unholy uh, trinity, I call it, which is I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm a conservative, and although I sound English, my father's actually uh, Welsh. He's from Monmouth, and my grandfather was a miner in in Merthyr. Um, so I think it's 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 really is social media. And very early on, um, uh, when I was uh, made an MP, I was promoted uh, within government into the health team, and someone actually put out on social media and they said, "Has Virginia been?" promoted or has she joined ISIS? Mm. Because from the abuse on social media, I can't quite tell. Oh. Now, this is completely mm. unacceptable. So you were getting so much abuse that people thought, hang on a moment, you're being compared, you know, it's almost like you're being compared to a terrorist. Exactly. And I, you know, I, I'm a working mom. I've got three kids. I'm just trying to do the job that the island mm. elected me to do. And what we see on social media is, I think we've obviously got the, the online safety bill going through Westminster this yeah. week. And I believe that these social media giants, they can do so much more. Uh, we need to have verified accounts. At the moment, people can post online with impunity. I don't get people coming up mm. to the street and, and, and giving me the abuse that I get on mm. social media. Most women have uh, had a threat even before they've had breakfast. And um, a lot of us are not on Twitter. Um, it's an it's an absolute uh, uh, an absolute cesspit. Can I ask you about that online safety bill because um, it's controversial, and um, the government has had pressure from some sides to to water it down because of threats to civil liberties and free speech. We had last week Andrea Leadsom, um, the former leader of the House, saying the government needed to strengthen the bill now and have mm. bigger fines on the social media companies. Do you think at the moment? the government is getting its strategy with the social media companies right? Or do we need to be tougher than this legislation is suggesting to really get a grip of this problem? I think for, for, for social media, it's accountability. And at the moment, um, the social media companies, they're not accountable and people posting are not accountable. What we see are these, these, these giants who've got these incredible algorithms that can direct mm. adverts at us. Um, but yet, when someone puts on social media that they want to poison me with ricin, that is not being picked up by Facebook. That's being picked up by the, social, by the, the local police. Um, so I think what we do need to see... Yes, we do need to see um, Ofcom getting involved. We do need to see fines and we do need to see accountability. But and much much more of it. But are you backing the, um, the backbenchers on the Conservative side who are saying that the legislation needs to be strengthened this week? Well, the well, that amendment that you're speaking about uh, relates to is actually getting some of the chief execs to be personally, mm. uh, personally liable and personally accountable. I mean, I think the the companies it, themselves need need. Is to that the right thing to do? Um, well, I, 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 they did look at it in the in, in sure. various stages that it went through, and the reality was um, that if we can actually um, target the companies mm. themselves, that's the way. That's so, the way as an MP, are you going to be voting for the amendment? I won't be backing the amendment, no. You won't be backing the amendment. So you're no, not because... backing the amendment to have tougher action on the social media companies? No, I think the action is tough, but I think the companies need to be accountable. Right. That's, that's the reality. So you, does... you... No, sorry, carry on. No, I just kind of thought, if you're saying we need tougher action and you've got lots of your colleagues saying that this action at the moment is not going to be tough enough and you're having to, to kind of take these kind of very difficult decisions for mm -hmm. your own personal safety, it surprises me that you aren't also, as a Member of Parliament, advocating taking tougher action. Like all these things, it's not as straightforward as that. I've, I've, look, I've looked at the bill, and what I want to see is not only the chief executives being accountable, it's actually the whole company is actually being accountable. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I and, want to see. And will and the bill not, do that? And Yes, it will. But I, I do feel that... Uh, we, it is also a, a public responsibility. We've got the, we've got the government, we've got the, the, the big social media companies. But what I'm seeing is, uh, is people in the community are really, really suffering. We're getting fewer women uh, coming forward for, for public office. These are talented, capable people, not only women. Um, these, are, these are people that we want to get involved is, uh, as community councillors, town councillors, trustees. Um, and I'm sure you, you get your fair share of, of abuse as well online. So uh, what I would say is it's a call to action, all of these people watching, they know, that, you know, you can see abuse um, mm. and to call it out. And I want it to be akin to um, socially unacceptable, a bit like smoking. So what I want to see is we, w this abuse is affecting our democracy. Mm. It is a, a real sort of a, a corrosive part of our society. And I think we all have a part to play in this mm. and calling it out. These people that abuse me, they have mothers, sisters, brothers, daughters. Mm. Let's call it out. We're seeing, I'm, I've 
I've actually seen a gradual... Um, I, I do get a lot of support, as I, as I said, and I do see more and more people calling it out. But I think that should be the norm. The norm should be that we can call it out. And one of the things I want to see in this bill is not having anonymous accounts, because uh, this is this is this goes back to the So, as a bare minimum, there should be identifying accounts rather than people mm. hiding behind avatars or... A non anonymity that would be something you would want in the bill is it exactly exactly there needs to be accountability and people shouldn't be able to post with impunity virginia crosby thank you very much indeed um andrew kevin does it, do you think it's got worse yeah, i'm sure it's social media and, and i think virginia yeah. hits the nail on the head particularly women why would women want to go into politics they're gonna have to put up with so this why why we water down the bill? political violence well, has been with us all the time 1812 spencer versal a prime minister assassinated mm. Uh, House of Commons burned down in the 1830s. The IRA killed four MPs, including Airy Neve in yeah. the House of Commons and E. Mm. Uh, Gow outside his house in, uh, in Eastbourne. But I think social media whips people yeah. Yeah. up. And I, I, I think m m what I really mm. agree on is ending the anonymous accounts. Yeah. yeah. So right. be held Kevin, Andrew, thanks very much indeed. Virginia Crosby, all the very best. Seems remarkable, doesn't it? Stab vests. Goodness me, what have we come to? Seven o'clock.